We're getting a burglary alarm from there. Please give us a call. Ah, the joke's on that guy. Bet he wishes he would have waited for a video where I actually tell where I keep my gold. So storage is a big part of holding physical gold. And now that you're buying this stuff, you want to plan for how and where to keep it all. And an easy way to think through your planning here is just to consider whether or not you'd store a comparable amount of cash the same way and then what you'd need to do to secure it. Some of you might be okay keeping 50 ounces of gold at home, but wouldn't even consider keeping $100,000 in cash. And even though cash loses value over time, it's worse off in a fire, and animals might eat your dollars, they're both portable assets. And two-legged animals could make off with either one. Now personally, I think it makes sense to split up physical holdings after a certain point, so let's just use one kilogram of gold since that number's come up a fair amount lately. In one kilogram, that's about 32 troy ounces of gold and approximately $60,000 in value. Now I have a few levels of home security. I have multiple safes. I have some of those hidden, some not, some built in, some bolted down, and some just sitting around in closets. Really, I just need one. I need a well-hidden, built-in safe to store something like that 32 ounces of gold. I have a pretty solid home security system. It's tied into a service and I have cameras. I have you know, plenty of things like that that would make it hard to get into my house in the first place. And then obviously if I was home when an intruder broke in, well, you know, that would be another level of security there as well. So I could store a kilogram of gold on site and not be too nervous about it, but there are a few reasons that I won't. The first reason is pretty simple. It's just the fact that I have this channel. The next is that I travel a lot. And then finally, I've got a family. I've got a wife and kids. And you put all three of those together, and there's just a possibility for bad things to happen. So I don't like to keep a whole lot of gold in my house. And even if you don't have a channel, it's really just the idea that somebody might know that you have that gold at your house. And with me, it's just there's a possibility of, of a person putting two and two together, figuring it out. It's just simply a temptation that I'd rather not have out there. Now $60,000, that's not a whole lot of reward for the kind of risk that it would take to break into a house with a security system, with cameras everywhere, with somebody in the house who's probably armed. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense. There are going to be softer targets out there with bigger reward. That said, I do think it makes a lot of sense to start splitting up physical gold holdings at a certain point. And if we stuck with that 32 ounces, to me... I would split that up so I didn't have more than 20 ounces in my home. And this part's very specific only to me because I have two locations that are very easy to use. I would split up that remaining 12 into 6 and 6. That would be very easy for me to do personally. Now, I know that doesn't make sense for a lot of other people, but for me, it's just convenient. Now, prior to having this channel, I had a much lower risk because I really didn't talk about having gold to anyone. Even though this is an anonymous channel, there's an added level of risk. But prior to that, the only people who knew about the gold that I have would have been immediate family members, people living with me. And I guess you could have followed me around 24 hours a day, seven days a week, when I went to a local coin shop, followed me home to see where I lived. I mean, it's possible. But I think it was a pretty good bet that nobody knew that I had the gold. And if someone was to break into my house for other reasons, not knowing that, it would have been very difficult to find it. I have it well hidden. All right, so I was just saying that at the time, the risk on that was really low when I got a call from my security company. I'm just going to play that because timing is just too good. We're getting a burglary alarm from there. Please give us a call. And I was actually able to see very quickly who triggered that alarm. They were supposed to have come tomorrow. They came early, figured it all out. Had, had I not been able to look on the cameras, I'm not at that house at the moment. I wouldn't have been able to clear it by myself. There would have been cops at the door. So I think that helps make my point. Whether that was $40,000 in gold or $60,000 in gold, you would have been on camera. So that's a lot of risk to take for a relatively low payout. So with the security system I have in my house and the insurance that I have, which is also important, I wouldn't be particularly nervous. Not at the 32 ounces, not at the 20 ounces. And like I mentioned earlier, prior to talking about this stuff on YouTube all the time, I had a lower risk profile. And where I'm going with this is that even though I have the security system that I do, I have a hidden safe, and nobody really knew about it, I was still splitting up that gold before all of this. 
And for the sake of planning, I just don't think there's a likely emergency that's going to come up that I'm going to need more than 20 ounces of gold inside of an hour. But I've always liked the idea of having some gold with me at all times. And so these other two locations that I mentioned earlier, I had three ounces of gold at both. And now as I've gotten a little bit more over the years, I've actually increased that to have a little bit more at those other locations. So that breakdown of 32 ounces where I wouldn't have more than 20 ounces at my primary residence and then six ounces at these other locations, well, that's not too far off. And then anything beyond that is just really easy to put in a vault. And you could use a safe deposit box if you want. There are a lot of reasons why you should look into that very closely. They are not as secure as you might want them to be. They're not as easily accessible as you might want them to be. And they're not insured. An actual precious metals vault, though, is something entirely different. Any of these kind of vaults that I'm familiar with have allocated or segregated accounts, which means that your bullion does not get mixed in with other people's bullion. They do a count, they do an itemization, and most of them will actually authenticate your gold. So they'll run it through a verification process. They'll check the weight, they'll check the size. A lot of them will actually do an XR scan, too, using something like the Sigma Metalytics Analyzer. So really, there are three options here. You either keep it all yourself, you spread it out, or you use a third party. And for me, I use all three of those options. I mix it up because there are points where I think it makes sense to have some at your home, some of it spread out, and some in a vault. Now, I've mentioned before that I don't have access to certain coins when I'm in certain places. I'll say that I'm traveling, so I don't have access to my maples or something like that. And that doesn't mean that I'm traveling with gold in my backpack. It just means the place that I happen to be for any extended period of time has some amount of gold there. And if I'm going to be there for a longer period of time because I make these videos, sometimes I will take a little bit of extra gold. It will be in a backpack, and hopefully it makes it there. I do typically have a quarter ounce American Eagle on me, and I don't know that there's any logical reason for it. I just started doing it a long time ago, and I guess I've just never quit. So I guess you could say that I do travel with gold, just not very much. And up until recently, I did keep some silver around in some packs that I had set aside for emergencies. I don't mean that I'm prepping for a zombie invasion or an EMP, but if I had to leave the house, the family had to leave the house for any extended period of time, I did have some silver, American Silver Eagles set aside in those packs. Now, the price got so crazy recently that I sold them. I figured that I would buy them back, and I still figured that I will. The idea there is that I would have 10 American Silver Eagles in each of these packs. And a hardcore prepper is probably either going to say that that's not enough or that silver really doesn't matter in an emergency situation. I'm somewhere in between. I just think that it, it makes sense to cover bases. If having 10 American Silver Eagles might be useful, they don't weigh a whole lot, I don't mind throwing them in a pack. And for the opposite side of the spectrum, your total normal person who's never considered emergency planning, well, I think that they might even benefit from thinking outside the box. It's not going to hurt them either to have 10 ounces of silver sitting in a pack. Now, I think that everyone should have certain things. It is a longer topic for another day, but I think 2020 has given us a really good example of why that is the case. Now, I personally used to plan for emergencies prior to that. It wasn't EMPs or zombies coming. It was just natural disasters that could come up. A tornado could run through your town and knock off the supply chain. You could have trouble getting at clean food and water for several weeks. You might have to leave for a while. Now we saw what happened in a wider scale lockdown and that was actually a little bit closer to what I was thinking about when I was putting together these packs. I think it makes a lot of sense for people to do this. And I started off talking about storage and now I'm talking about disaster planning and you might be wondering how the two go together. Well, it's simple. They're both very important parts of the same plan and if you look at it in detail, you start with your risk tolerance. You need to know how much risk you're open to taking and then at the other side of the spectrum, you need to know how much gold or silver, whatever it is, how much you might need in certain circumstances. And then when you know that, well then you can figure out where to keep it what you need to do to secure it, and how quickly you could get at it all. So for me, my risk tolerance is relatively low because of my family. My overall security is pretty good. I haven't mentioned the very loud dog that I have. 
and it's just very easy for me to spread a little bit out. So I've made the decision not to keep more than 20 ounces at my primary home, spread a little bit more out between two other locations, and then vault anything else. Now obviously that's not universal advice. Really the only thing that I've said so far today that I think is universally applicable is that idea of just taking a minute and thinking about whether or not you would keep a comparable amount of cash on hand as you would gold. Because there's just something about physical gold and silver that makes you think you should hoard it all, you should keep it all at your home, and I don't know that that makes sense. If you're not willing to keep $100,000 in cash at, at your house, does it really make sense to keep 50 ounces of gold? That decision is up to you, but I know what I think personally. And I know it would be a lot more fun in this video if I just walked you through my house and showed you where I kept everything, but obviously I'm not going to do that. What I would say is there are some really good ideas for safes out there, safes that you can actually mount between the studs of your walls. And that makes it very easy to just cut a hole in the sheetrock, mount a safe to some studs, and then hide it. It's also very easy to find a safe that you can bolt down either into the concrete foundation or into wood joists. I mean, all of these are good options. They don't do too much damage to your house. And with a little bit of planning, again, you can just kind of build them in and hide them. Nobody will ever know. And speaking of nobody ever knowing, there is always the option of just hiding the stuff in plain sight. I know people will put them in cereal boxes. I know there are a lot of places that don't require a safe at all. You might put them in a vent. I don't do that, at least not that you know of. But what might work at, say, 3 ounces of gold probably doesn't work at 50 ounces. It doesn't always scale. And personally, I do things a little bit differently at each location. Those locations that I have only a little bit of gold at, it's a lot more about hiding than it is about securing. So I didn't realize I had this much to say. I had a few comments recently about traveling with gold, so I must have used some dumb words in one of my videos recently where it made it seem like I'm actually traveling with a bunch of gold when what's really happening is I just have a bit of gold at different locations. It was a simple topic to clear up. It only took me 12 minutes to do it. Beyond that part though, just clearing up what I said that was dumb, it's really kind of a tough topic. There are just too many moving parts specific to each individual. Capsules, tubes, and even these pelican cases, maybe? Those are easy recommendations to make. But beyond that, I can really only tell you what I do personally. So let's just call it good there. If any part of this was interesting, hit that like button. That's a big help to the channel. And I think there was a lot in there for comments. So how much do you feel comfortable keeping on site? What do you do to keep it secure? Where do you live and what's the combination to your safe? I mean, whatever you're comfortable telling us. And if you're still here, Thank you again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.